After a morning of hiking with a troubled stomach and of failing to refill on water, I had taken a lunch break at Lidenipan, a stunning summit location with a small cabin and a breathtaking view. Alright, well, all packed up, ready to go. I had some beef jerky, I had some nuts, I had some dried apple slices, had some water. Not sure how much I've left. <laughs> we'll find out when I run out, I guess. Hopefully I'll find some more water reasonably soon. Feels sad to leave. It's an amazing place. Check out the cabin too. I can show you the view from the window there. What a place. But I also checked out the forecast. And now it says rain is going to start around 9 or 10 on Saturday. Which is tomorrow. Let's so not walk without restarting my GPS. Here we are. Um, I'm like 20 some kilometers away from the end of this trip. So my current thinking is, could I finish almost all of it today and then just sleep for a few hours and then do the, lo the rest? Or could I even finish all of it? Which would be my longest day. To sleep for a few hours in the car and then drive home. It would be a super rough day today. Basically another full day of hiking from now. Which time-wise is not impossible, but energy-wise it's not going to be fun. But it is possible, and the question is how not fun is that going to be compared to the not fun of hiking in the rain tomorrow? That is the question. By the way, the forecast now says it's going to start at 10. Yeah, but it also says it's going to be even worse. It's going to rain even more. I feel like I've been lied to. Why are we going up? I was just, when I was spending some time there, I uh, checked out the remaining parts of the, the trail. And this is the last like big mountain. There are a couple of like 100 meter climbs. For none of this 250 meter nonsense anymore so hopefully there's less of this stuff and more of just nicely sloped well my stomach is not very happy today so I might throw a wrench in my plans and I am now 100% out of water there is water, as far as I understand it, at the end of the section. But that is four kilometers away, so that's like an hour's hiking, at least. A little depending on how, uh, how bad the trail is. Uh, hopefully there's water before that, but uh, yeah, not the best situation. I will say that's pretty cool. <sighs> Somebody wants to burn a lot of wood. <sighs> the John Nils Mountain. <sighs> All right. I'll take it. And the trail just <laughs> drops off the edge. Good, it's been good knowing you. What the heck? Wasn't this side supposed to be less steep?
This is wild. So we're still more than 200 meters above sea level. And there are all these boulders here. Little like nicely rounded stones. Apparently the reason why they are here is because during the ice age, the latest ice age, this land was pushed down into the earth by the weight of the ice. And as the ice receded, this was the ocean floor. So those stones have all been rolled there by the waves and then rolled back and forth across each other to smooth them out like that. So they're, that's why they're so rounded. And like all the rocks that are here, are kind of ended up here that way. We're more than 200 meters above sea level. The land here is actually still rising from that event. So I think they measured it at like 0 0.9 millimeters per year, something like that. So I guess you can say the high coast keeps getting higher, just not very fast. All of that is fascinating, of course. Still wish I didn't have to walk across it because <laughs> it's uh, they're quite unstable, many of them. So it's a little bit of a puzzle. It becomes really slow to avoid injury. You have to really think about every step. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give you, as your viewer, a unique look that nobody else ever sees. Because everybody who hikes this has to look down 100% of the time to not break their f legs. Because there's just roots and stones and stuff everywhere. So I have no idea what's around here. I hope it's beautiful. That is the forest where you must not go. That way is evil. I was joking around, but also becoming more dehydrated by the moment, and my stomach was still in turmoil and overall actually feeling pretty bad. With only three kilometers left to the end of the section, that nonetheless felt like a very long distance. I have a lot of footage from this section because somehow I failed to stop the GoPro recording, leading it to record a lot of footage, but also to drain a sizable chunk of a battery. I felt terrible in several different ways, and the trail made all of the decisions harder because of it. It almost led to a lake, but not quite. I could see hints of the water through a rather dense section of forest, and had to make the call whether to use up extra energy working on my way through the bush to get more water, which I desperately needed. Mm. Oh. <sighs> But I ended up deciding not to, because the stomach problems were the more pressing issue. At least on the plus side, the trail had opened up into an easily walked forest road, which meant I could keep making good pace. Please. <sighs> I pretty much decided on just gunning it as quickly as I could, ignoring all alternates and just heading to the campsite at the end of the section, where I would be able to both get water and let my stomach have some peace. But, of course, when I recorded something about that, I turned off the GoPro, which had been recording all along, rather than turning it on. That all happened just before reaching the sign. Okay. Oh. 
On second thought, maybe I should take this alternate to go 500 meters to a cafe and food and stuff. Yes, please. Well, ain't that a beautiful sight? Oh, yes, please. I had completely written off this alternate when planning. It led to a seaside camping site and beach, which had seemed like an unnecessary long way around. Now I was filled with gratitude for finding it, with proper bathrooms where my stomach could battle with its inner demons, a tap for proper drinking water, and a fantastically friendly lady running the place who was happy to serve me a burger. On any other day, that would have been an average meal, I'm sure, but to me, this was sanctuary. The place is Hersholm's Havspad, and I do recommend a visit if you hike the trail or just happen to be around the area. I spent a while here, trying to let my stomach accept being reasonably functioning part of my body again, as well as just resting. Eventually, the pressure of tomorrow's forecast pushed me back into action. That was well worth it. Had some food, had a coke, packed up two liters of water to not repeat old mistakes. And now I'm going, and what went down in this place must climb back up, apparently. This also seems to be the one section, the one alternate on the entire trail that is marked in blue on the map. It doesn't have blue markers, so I'm kind of just navigating by maps at the moment. This is the only road that goes the right direction according to the trail map, so... I'm just guessing that this is it. Hey, look. I think I am on the right trail after all. This is the first blue marker I see. And it's 600 meters up in the woods. Hi. Right. Pretty sure I'm coming down on the camp now, which is the switch over to the second to last section for me. It's now 5.30, which means this next section is shorter and normal and still is supposed to take five to six hours. I completed the previous section. If you remove the, the long break I took at the top, I completed it in under the time estimate. Best case scenario is I'd be finished with this section by like half past eight. Probably a good marker. And then I have another 9.8 or something of difficult terrain left. So I guess we'll just aim to complete this section and then make up my mind. Because <sighs> before I've even started this, I'm gonna have done 16 today. Looks like we're back on a trail. I was kind of expecting a camp here, but maybe it's further back that way and I don't need to go through it. So let's go. This is the section split. There's 20 kilometers to go. Would have loved to stay here, but I need to make those kilometers happen because I really don't want to hike 20 in the pouring rain tomorrow. It's nice though. And we're all walking again. 109. That would mean 19 left, because that's actually 121. Okay, so, real talk. Losing one day from Saturday being all rainy. And the pressure of that has kind of taken the enjoyment out of this a little bit for me. I kind of just like, was looking for it to be done. Which is sad, I should be enjoying it. So, there is a camping site with a shelter and a privy and stuff in like a couple of kilometers. That would put me about 15 kilometers left. If that's a nice one, I might camp there. Like, I think I've got 18 left today. 
if I want to make it the entire way, and I believe I could do it. But it would be a slog and not enjoyable. And that's not why I'm here. So if it's a nice one, we'll take it. Oh boys, we'll move on. As it turned out, shortly after that, the condition of the trail would take a sharp turn for the worse. <laughs> everything about this though. <laughs> That's cool though. Nearly, nearly tripped. Just turning the GoPro on. How, how is this normal? Okay then, sure guidebook, sure. I swear they've just painted orange dots on random cliffs. This, no reason it would be there, and not here, and not down there. <sighs> what the heck, this section. <sighs> Very slow going right now. <sighs> like, what the? <sighs> oh. <sighs> Stealth branch. Jesus, not more. Jesus, <sighs> what the hell? I was so happy we were in the forest path for a while. <clears throat> now look what we have here. Does the trail actually go up there? That's quite the climb. I wasn't expecting that big of a climb today. Or at least if I stop before that camping, I mean, before the site. Whatever, I can't talk anymore. Too tired. It's a gravel beach. Yep. We're about one kilometer away from that shelter place. Just had to drop pack for a bit. I'm deathly tired. These boulder fields just suck the life out of my legs. It's incredibly, incredibly intense to walk on them. We have done 5.30 after leaving that camping place. I saw a marker for 18. I must have missed the one for 17 and the one for 16 should be coming up. So we'll be about 15 if we camp there, which is doable tomorrow. I'll just like, I'm just really afraid of the thought of walking over stuff like this. That's become wet. So I guess the plan is we're gonna try to camp there if we can and check the, check the forecast again. Do I even have reception here? Yeah, I do. Still says rain all day tomorrow. But yeah, it doesn't start until 10. So if I can get up reasonably early in the morning, break camp pretty quickly and just get going, then I'd have at least a few hours to get through some of this stuff. If it starts at 10, I mean, I'll do part of it in the rain, that's just given. It's more than halfway through, so I'll have done more than half of the section. So we got one and a half sections to go. I think that'll have to be it. I would be stumbling like a, an undead through the rest of this. It has to be that campsite. I'm gonna rest here for a few more minutes then pick up the pack and go there and see. There's the 16. 
I don't know if you can see them. They're just not swarming here. You can put my bug net on, but they don't seem to be attacking, so it's just an annoyance regardless. This is like a parkour challenge or something. I don't, I don't know if there's a way that you're supposed to take, or if you're just supposed to make it up as you go along. Jeez. I don't know if the solid rock or the scree is the worst. It just goes on and on and on. We were going way over there into this bay here. There's supposed to be a shelter. And that's probably where we stay, either in the shelter or hang there or just makeshift something or whatever, I don't care. Actually, kind of shelter would be better because it would be quicker to tear down in the morning. But this is super slow going. Well, here it is. We made it. Shelter's seen better days. <laughs> I don't know. If, it can't have been meant to be there. No. So we can't sleep here, or it would be not smart to do so. But we'll figure out somewhere to hang around here. That should be fine. Got the milk set up over there. It's not perfect, but it'll do. Get a few hours of sleep. I am zonked. Charging up my my garming a little bit to last the last stretch. Got decent power in this battery, but the other one drained away. I must have left the GoPro on or recording or something. So we're basically down to one. Don't know what I have left in this, but it's probably not much. I'll charge up my phone. And then I guess I'll use whatever is left for another GoPro battery. So I'm gonna make some food. Should eat something. Don't really feel like it, but I should eat something. And then just try to get as prepped as possible for tomorrow. Get out early. Holy smokes. Okay. Today's dinner. Kebab stew. Only having one of the small ones because I also have that burger and fries. And this might be the last time I'm cooking on trail. Fruits misly cereal thing. To have that in the morning and then go. We have 15k to go. I still have some nuts. I hope my stomach does better tomorrow. And I also hope that because there was such a difficult section just then that I just completed on something that was branded normal. That that was the only difficult section that the rest is going to be easy to average it out to normal. That's my hope. Yep. And that would mean the real challenge is the remaining 9.8 or whatever it is of difficult. And the more I can do of that before the rain hits, the better. So it is now half past eight. I'm just waiting for this to be done so I can eat it, pack everything up as much as I can, and go sleep. Well, I'm all tucked away in the hammock. Just need to get my sleeping bag out. It is 20 past nine. It's still pretty bright out. It's, I think one of my major uh, mistakes when planning this was I didn't bring a sleeping mask, but I've got my got my took, so I guess I'll just like sleep with that over my eyes or something. So I think that's why I've been waking up so early. Like I've been waking up at three because the sun is up, <laughs> which is silly, but yeah, that's how it is. So I'm zonked, and my back is really appreciating this laying down thing right now. So, good night from the penultimate day. I went to sleep that night, feeling like my stomach was at least on the mend, 
feeling accomplished over a hard day and confident I had a good plan for the coming day. I wish I could tell you it worked out. <laughs>